Keir Stardy of Sinn Féin. But first, the Junior Minister, Minister of State for European Affairs, Jennifer Carl McNeil of Fine Gael. Jennifer, how much of this so-called Harris Hop or the Harris Honeymoon can be put down to Fine Gael under his leadership, becoming almost quasi-populist in its approach, been far tougher in relation to immigration, for example, than it was under Leo Varadkar. I think what you've seen is a focus by Simon Harris on a whole range of different issues, whether it's the recognition of the state of Palestine through his work in the European Council, whether it's a focus on some of the processes within migration. Uh, he is a different leader. He's a different Taoiseach. Um, he has a, you know, a, a refreshed team uh, and everybody brings their own energy and their own priorities into politics. He's also been campaigning vigorously. He's been out listening to people, meeting people, certainly in my area in Dunleary. He was very welcome. He was very well received. People want to talk to him. They want to see this energy that's an important thing in politics uh, that everybody has. Is, is that an implied that. criticism of his predecessor that I he had become lethargic, even moribund, and the Fine Gael was suffering because no, of that? Well, I think if you look in with any reality at the position of Taoiseach, you're scheduled from 7am till 11pm, pretty much six or seven days a week. It is a human, you know, a, any human doing that job needs to maintain their energy and it is important that there's a refresh of that from time to time and that is, Leo Radker was in that position as leader for Fine Gael and Taoiseach twice for a very considerable period and any person, any new leader would bring a different energy to a new job as a different presenter in your position would. Well, but Fine Gael clearing the tents, the migrant tents for example, uh, cutting the benefits to Ukrainians those type of things, that's why I ask about important. whether you've taken a quasi-populist approach to move towards towards those who have been complaining or criticising, who you feared losing votes to. Don't you think it was an important uh, thing to move those tents, that those com- the conditions that people had b- gotten into there were deeply unsanitary, not humanitarian, that they have been moved to a much more suitable accommodation uh, that is not necessarily tented, that has appropriate sanitation facilities. Isn't it appropriate that uh, two years into the war with, Uk- with Russia, the invasion of Russia, that we align benefits to people across the board, recognising that many are being provided with food and with and, and board, and that that is more aligned uh, for, 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 for all people coming uh, under the Temporary Protection Directive uh, from now on, recognising how generous the supports have been. So these things have to be managed in a humanitarian way and are being managed in a humanitarian way, but in also a very clear way. This is the Irish state, after all, and we have to be responsible for what happens to people within it, and we have to be responsible for, for the people who are residing here, be they Irish or otherwise, and we have to do that in a serious, clear, but also very humanitarian way, and all of those steps, I think, reflected both of those things. Okay, uh, Pierre Stardy of Sinn Féin, I had your party leader, Mary Lou MacDonald, here on the programme last Wednesday, and in relation to immigration, it seemed that what she wanted was the processes that are in place to be performed better. That there really wasn't that much difference between the government and Sinn Féin's position, merely that you wanted things done in a more efficient, effective manner, but the same things. Is that, do you think, one of the reasons why perhaps you suffered at the polls? No, I, I don't think so. And I think there there is obviously differences between ourselves and government. Government, uh, as Jennifer says, we're two years on from the war in Ukraine and there is no clear plan. Indeed, one of the things that is absent is from government, and we've been calling since last year, what is the plan when the temporary protection uh, order comes to an end in March? Uh, and we're very clear that that has to be spelt out now, that there shouldn't be a renewal of that, uh, that people should be able to apply for work permits where they're there. Uh, others will have to apply for international national protection and those who, uh, who can return to safe zones, if it is safe, will have to return. But there is no plan from government actually at, at what is going to happen in March when uh, large tens of thousands of Ukrainians will lose their temporary protection and, and what is plan B. But that, yeah, you but what would you do, sorry, if, if you were in charge, so what would your plan for those Ukrainians just, be? I, I've just outlined uh, it there, Matt, that first of all, we need to now put in place the processes. So some people are, are working, some people are working in key areas, and uh, they should be able to apply for work permits in, 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 uh, if they satisfy those conditions. Others will be looking for international protection because they have fleet war zones. Uh, we should look at uh, some, obviously, um, if it is safe to return to parts of Ukraine at that time, then they will have to return. Um, yeah. But there has to be a process here. There has to be... So you would return uh, people, people to Ukraine, would you? Do you think is it no, safe that, to return people to Ukraine while Russia uh, is still engaged in a war there? Matt, what I said is if it is safe at that time, then that is what would happen. This it is, is extraordinary. It's not a case. It, Jennifer, with respect, it is... And, 
What I've said is that if it's safe at that time, of course, it is a temporary protection. But nobody knows what is what, what the plan is at this point in time. So the question is, is what is the government's plan? The temporary protection order comes to an end in March of, of, of next year. And we don't have a plan. And we don't have a plan to repurpose some of the hotels. What we're seeing now is some direct pro, uh, uh, provision centres being, uh, being, being provided by government. But that's a plan that was supposed to be enacted, you know, five, six years ago from the Catherine Day report. So there is criticism, of course, in terms of how the government is handling this issue. But you ask me a question, is that the reason why we didn't reach our ambitions uh, in the election? I, I don't believe it is. Uh, I think, yes, we have to communicate a lot better with uh, with with those who support us, with those who want to support us. Um, and and, and uh, it, you know, we have to do that in immigration, but in other areas. Oh, OK, but sorry, I want to <laughs> ask you, Pierre, still in relation to immigration, going back as far as 2014, I think it's fair to say that Sinn Féin has had the most progressive approach in relation to immigrants to the country but that seems to have shifted dramatically over the last year or so down to the extent where we heard from an earlier contributor about leaflets being distributed in County Loud effectively wanting uh, the border to be policed to stop immigrants coming across it. Is that not a difficulty for Sinn Féin, not just in the shifting of its position on immigrants but that the party that wants no border on the island is looking for the one that we have to be strictly enforced? Look, look, Matt, nobody's looking and no, the solution to immigration is not hardening up the border. We went through this with Brexit. Look, I live in Donegal. I know what the border means. We travel past, uh, through it, uh, you know, multiple times a, a day. You can't place the border in, in that scenario and that's just, you know, nonsense to suggest that that is the, the solution to this scenario. What is the solution to this scenario is to have robust procedures in here. So when somebody comes here and looks for international protection, we need to make sure that they're are quickly processed. That means doubling the number of people that we have at this point in time so that decisions can be taken quickly. And then those who are fleeing war and persecution, they need to be dealt with sympathetically and they need to be provided. Jennifer Curran McNeil, respond to that. Um, those who aren't, Mary those Lou McDonald said be on radio just last function. week, Mary Lou McDonald said just last week that she would not, she was not uncomfortable with increased checks on the border. That your opponents in Northern Ireland have said that you are weaponising the Irish border in a completely new way with as Matt said the leaflets and lies but let's just reflect on what Pierce has done here he's coming here Jennifer, immediately respect, after a local just election finish the point he's and I will let you back immediately in immediately after a local election Russia is increasing its aggression in Ukraine what that means for peace in Europe is incredibly important and having failed to do, having failed to gain vote share in the way that it expected in Sinn Féin Pierce Doherty has come in here and basically said guess what we don't care whether the war is getting better or getting worse. We're actually actively tabling, sending people back to Ukraine next March. Now, these are the people uh, to, to areas that's that, the, that true, we're going to, that we're going to suggest. That we're going to, that we're going to suggest. That we're going to suggest. That we're going to suggest may or may not be safe and we're going to make an assessment in relation to that. The European Union is taking the war in Ukraine incredibly serious as an existential issue for the Union. Ireland has taken over the European presidency in 2026 and there's complete lack of seriousness by senior Sinn Féin politicians coming on the radio today when the electors has just told them that they don't take them seriously because of their failure to have detailed policy, because of their extraordinary number of U-turns that they do do when they do decide on policy. The electors has told them what they think of that and for Pierce to come in now and not just fly new kites in relation to migration and continue to go back to that, but actually suggest that that's their approach in relation okay, to... Okay, Pierce Starge, please, please. I want to give well, Pierce an opportunity to respond to that, Jennifer. But, but that is you entirely actually heard, without seriousness, Pierce. Well, Matt, you actually heard what I said. I said where somebody is able to return to a safe country, then that should happen. Of course that should happen. But it's not, there is no suggestion whatsoever like of returning. Speaking notes from the with, Russian sorry, one respect, second please, Jennifer. With, with respect, Jennifer, because you went on radio there and you just uh, misled the public in relation to what I said. We outlined this last year when we called on the government to make it clear what is going to happen after the temporary protection order. What we're saying very clear is three things. People should be able to apply for work permits who are who sh if they're entitled to work here. The second thing thing is, those who are fleeing persecution, if they're from Ukraine, fleeing war and persecution, to be able to stay here. If it is safe to return at that time, then they should be returned. We don't know if it's going to be safe. The problem here, Jennifer, is you have no plan. Tell me what you is going what? to happen in March. Do you know what I realise? No, let me just say this, this here, Jennifer. This reflection that Sinn Féin have let, done. Let me say, one second, John. One second. Here. They Jennifer, know what they're going to do. So one second, Jennifer. Around this year, I'm putting a direct question to you. You are in government. What is going to happen in March when the temporary protection order ends because no Ukrainian knows what's going to happen. Okay, Jennifer, I'm going to put this direct knows. question to you so now, please spell it out. 
the electorate gave you their answer on Friday in relation to how serious they think your policies okay, are. But and Jennifer, it's a reasonable question because you've I, already cut the benefits for Ukrainians. The temporary protection directive is being discussed by the European Union and we will see what the situation is in relation to Russia and Ukraine. But this is much more important because this well, speaks to our domestic plan? politics. Now, please don't but interrupt no me again. You have no plan for March. This is you have no plan for March, Jennifer. You criticise both. One May. voice this at a June. time, please. This One is t- June in 2020. This is June 2024. And in June 2024, we had local elections where the government parties have come out with the support of the public to continue in local elections. It is we are the Fine Gael, My party is the largest party in terms of first preferences, the largest party in Dublin. What they did not do was back the social media politics of Sinn Féin. And what Sinn Féin now afterwards have said that they're going home to have a reflection and a good think about the vote that they got and the vote that they much more importantly didn't get. And what Pierce has done now this afternoon is come out and said, "Here's what. Here's the." Best benefit of our thinking. We are going to weaponise migration even more than we did before. I am coming out and instead of reflecting on the local election results, I am coming out let, let daggers first. Daggers Jennifer, first just so, on Pierce, Ukraine. Briefly, and that's Pierce, our strategy for the general election. I need election. to take a break this and I have other things that I want to ask you about. Jennifer, please. Uh, Pierce, very quick response and then we take a break. Things. First of all, Jennifer clearly doesn't have a plan for March. That's that's the first thing. We outlined our position last year. The second thing is... Let's How could you outline your position last year when Russia is actually media. actively Jennifer, and more aggressive? And the second, the second thing is, we did not reach our ambitions in terms of this local election, but we've won a dozen additional seats. Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil have actually had combined one of the worst local oh, elections in a hundred years. Right. You have lost dozens of seats. In Donegal, you have lost half your in seats. In Stunleary, we've here. taken you're nine out place. of nine okay. seats. Okay. I'm going to have to call McDonald's. a halt for a moment. Okay, we are going to take a break, and we will come back and we will discuss other issues arising from the local and European elections with Jennifer Carroll McNeil and Pierre Starty after this. Jennifer Carroll McNeil of Fine Gael, Minister of State, and Pierre Starty of Sinn Féin have stayed with us. And Pierce, if I'm going to go to you, because one thing I know that's happened in recent years since the last general election is that you and a number of colleagues have done an extraordinary amount of work in preparing for the possibility of government. People like David Cullinan speaking to all the stakeholders in the health sector. Ona Bryn talking to all of the developers and financiers in relation to housing. And you talking to people in the multinational sector and accountancy firms and all the rest of it about your plans if you were to become Minister for Finance. But is that backfiring on you? Particularly you recently went to London with Davy Stockbrokers, establishment stockbrokers, and reassured investors that essentially Sinn Féin would not rock the boat economically. In trying to appeal to the middle ground, have you failed to do so, but in a sense lost a lot of your core audience? Look, I think any uh, opposition party who has uh, ambitions to to lead government and to be in government obviously has to do their their their, their work, and that's what exactly David Owen, myself, and others have been doing. It's about our policies, and it's about trying to communicate those policies uh, with wide as wide as audiences as as possible. Um, and and that is about our plan for housing and how we're going to uh, deliver social and affordable and cost rental houses. How we're going to end the crisis that has been created by Fianna Fáil and, and Fine Gael. And of course we speak to developers, and of course we speak to approved housing bodies, uh, and we speak to, most importantly to those that are affected, uh, whether they're uh, tenants or whether they're people that are locked in the, in the, in the, in the spare bedroom in, a, in, in their period. But you're also and talking to big another. money and you're reassuring big money. And is that type of thing then distressing to your potential electorate? I, I, I don't think that's uh, that, that was the what what was at the issue here to to, to tell you the God's honest truth. Um, I, I I don't think that's the, the the message that came came across. I think that uh, there there are a number of things that we have to learn from this election. Um, unfortunately, we were in the same position uh, five years ago. Obviously, five years ago we were losing seats. This time we're actually gaining seats, but nowhere near the the expectation that we had. Um, and uh, you know, and 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 that's disappointing for ourselves. It's also disappointing for uh, those excellent candidates who who didn't meet uh, the the target this time round. But look, you know, we did dust ourselves down five years ago. Um, I know some of the people who lost their seats five years ago 
ended up running for the general election. And indeed, in some cases, they topped the poll. Now, I am not at all predicting that that is what's going to happen the next time round. But there is a difference between local and, and European elections. And as I made the point here, you know, this was a, a, a bruising day uh, weekend for, for Sinn Féin, no doubt about it, despite our gains. But it also was, you know, one of the worst local elections for Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael. The, pro- the issue here is, and, and like in 100 years, like they've, they've dropped I bought about 80, 90, 90 seats between them. Um, the, the issue here is a lot of independents picked up uh, seats uh, along with themselves, picking up a few. Uh, so there is still a mood for change out there. Our job is to listen to the pe- people, and we are listening to, the, to, to what they've said to us over this weekend, uh, and to respond back to that. Because for those who not only cast their vote in us, for those who have hope that Sinn Féin can actually end the housing crisis, turn the health crisis around they, they, they're dependent on us and I know a lot of other people who voted for independence uh, you know and they're they, 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 they know that there's a different yeah, but in terms we of heard the general earlier, election Pierce, you know, where you're electing government Pierce we heard earlier from Kevin Cullingham of Ireland Thinks about the detailed research that they did amongst voters on Friday and they discovered of young people living at home with their parents the people that you've been appealing to, to try and get support for your housing policies more of them voted for Fine Gael than voted for Sinn Féin Look, I haven't seen many of those uh, young people who are uh, trapped in 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 the, in the spare room that 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 uh, are voting for Fine Gael. But look, if the opinion poll shows that I haven't seen the detail of that, Matt, to tell you the cause on his trip. Okay, well then let me I go have, back to Jennifer. What I can tell you, what, but can I tell you what I can tell you is that there is a huge amount of people who are absolutely locked out of home ownership, who are trapped into sky high rents because of this government and our job, and, and who to, didn't to, vote to for you in the local vote. and European elections, but Jennifer. For Karen and, and, McNeely, and, and I know. I'm going to go back to Jennifer Pierce yeah, because perfect. isn't it also the case that this election is totally different to what a general election is going to be like? Just like four and five years ago, there are going to be many more people who will turn out to vote in the general election, and they will vote for different reasons. And the local support you might have got for the local elections may not transfer into a general election. Yes, of course. This was a local election and a general election is different and the general election will be debated and fought on the issues of the day that are, you know, of, of, of national significance. But this is an election of great significance in itself because this is, and, and the European election where Sinn Féin has performed terribly, terribly badly uh, and Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil are, are, are doing fine. But in the local election, what you're talking about, excuse me, and Fine Gael is, what Fine Gael is, what Fine Gael is the largest party in local government, in, in local government at the moment largest first preference, largest in Dublin I mean perhaps oh, sorry, Pierce, perhaps Pierce, yourself and Fianna Fáil between you are doing about 45% of the vote and could it also be at this stage now that you're totally locked with each other that you're going to be in lockstep because your only chance of being in power for the future is being with each other Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil and the Green Party have had a very successful coalition for the past four years. We have managed to work together through COVID, through the invasion of Ukraine and what that did to energy prices and we have managed to maintain an economy that is in surplus. We have managed to inc- reduce taxes, increase spending, put money back in people's pockets. Fine Gael is totally focused on making sure that we have a good economy and, a, and, a, and building more housing and managing things well. Despite four years of negative campaigning and the first electoral opportunity, the first electoral opportunity to express preferences. People have rejected the negative social media campaigning of, fin- of Sinn Féin and chosen to stay with the stability, okay. hard work and committed public service of Fine Gael and Fianna Fáil in particular. We see in these results okay, from the Green Jennifer, Party. Okay, Jennifer, Pierce, we a see final that, question we to see you. That across constituencies, including in Mary Lou's own constituency, Sorry, where Fine Gael I need have done incredibly Pierce. strongly. Pierce Doherty, will Mary Lou MacDonald lead Sinn Féin into the general election and are you happy for her to do so? Yeah, absolutely, Matt. Um, absolutely. Mary Lou is the person to lead us into the, the general election. There's no question about that. Our job now is listening to what the public told us, um, listening to them, responding to them, because I know a lot of people in my community and communities I met right down the, right down the, the state can't afford five more years of Fianna Gael and Fianna Fáil. Our job is, and there's a huge responsibility us to make sure that that doesn't happen. So we're going to dust ourselves down, we're going to respond back, and we're going to take this government on, Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael, I think and try to see it if would we be better have a change if they would, of government if Sinn Féin might spend their time getting producing more policy detail that people can actually we take seriously. The they might the spend we better the, at delivery on the ground and maybe take a break from okay. social media. All and right, all right, right. That's, it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Thank Thank you very much, Jennifer Carroll McNeil and Pierce Stardy. The last word with Matt Cooper. Weekdays from 4 30.